What up, players? It's Wolboss Tay up in this mode. Today we are going to be taking our Brag the Gutsman model, and it's not really a very popular model, um, mainly because the rules aren't that great and because of its exorbitant price. But I thought I'd do a little break from the other things, the Empire and the uh, Vampire Count stuff I've been doing lately, and get this guy painted just because he's going to take really, really not that long to do. Um, so here's the first part of the tutorial where we get him up to this stage. A lot of base coats and we end with the washes, which are my favorite parts. So I kind of wanted to start with, um, just start the video by showing you what he's going to look like Woo! by the end of um, this video. So hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in the next one. What up, Oga players? Welcome back to my how to paint a <clears throat> man eater with a two handed weapon, aka Brag the Gutsman. Um, one little thing that I did, which I should have done at the end of the last video, was I painted some ogren flesh onto the two little human skulls down here at the bottom. So uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take. Where is it? 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 A little bit of. Here we go. Dwarf bronze. And we are going to paint in on the base some <clears throat> bronze details. So, talking about these, uh, the gut plates that our guy is standing on top of. Right there. Right here. Actually, should have done this before the wash. But um, that's okay, we'll just give it a, a, another wash to make it look like old gold. And then um, give us a nice little surface to work our verdigris on. Yeah, the fluff or the background story behind this guy is so cool. An ogre executioner goes out and hunts naughty ogres and cuts off their gut plate with his giant sickle. It's too bad his rules are pants, as they say. <clears throat> okay, next thing we're going to do is we are going to take a little bit of. Um, where is it? Calvin Brown. And we're gonna paint the little stitches in his <coughs> head mask. <clears throat> it's been raining all night here where I live and um yeah, it's just been pretty ugly. Thinking this might not be the right brush for the job. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna switch brushes, get my thin brush. If you find that your uh, your hand is getting sore after holding the brush a certain way, then um, you're probably you probably should change the way you're holding your brush. I was holding my brush a certain way that I I had learned from looking at a book and and it just made my hand ache like a lot. It was terrible. So I stopped and now I just hold it like how I hold my pencil. And hey, what do you know? It works like perfectly fine. So and the way that I learned to hold it was like from a pro painter. He was like you have to hold your brush like this, I was watching some video and it's like, you gotta hold your brush like this if you want maximum paint control on your brush. Nice, like. Dude, that, that is not good. If your hand is cramping like every five, you know, every five minutes. Now I'm going to fix any mistakes that I made with some Chaos Black. And there you go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint some 
Rust. So I'm going to take Bistro Brown. Uh, not really sure what the new paint equivalent is to this. So you're going to take Bistro Brown and you're going <clears> to <throat> water it down, thin it down, as we say, on your wet palette. And then we're going to paint it in between all of the rivets. Kind of like where the um, where most of your badab black ended up. In between the chain links. As one of my helpful viewers pointed out, rust appears on silver, but verdigris doesn't. Something about the oxidiz oxidiz oxidization. So I said, okay, then you know what? Let's let's do rust. If we cannot do verdigris. Rust is just as good. So we're gonna paint our watered down East Jewel Brown into as much of these details as you can to give it a very aged, rusted looking appearance. On his gut plate, anywhere where metal meets metal um, is great because with the silver, uh, you can really see where there's that flash of, you know, warm brown color to offset it. You want to go overboard, <coughs> but because you've thinned down your metal, or your, your brown, what it should do is leave a very nice looking gray, or, or brown, if you can see there. It just looks like rust. Same for back, back here, the sickle. <coughs> and um, right down like that. Between all of the rivets. And in here. And on this side. Cool! Oh, let's not forget his little bracer. Nice little trick that I also like to do is uh, like acid rain streaks, <clears throat> which means that here I'll show you how I do it on this guy's got plate. You just take a little bit of your bestial brown and then you do like a streak straight down. It gets thinner at the bottom. So it kind of looks like rust streaking down off the metal. It's a cool effect. I like it. Last place we're going to be applying it is down here by the the iron, the steel tip boot. Just go on all the rivets. <coughs> and um, just to tie it into these gut plates at the bottom that he's stepping on, we're going to put some of that rust bestial brown color there as well. Okay. Very good, very good. Um, <coughs> just like our other ogres, you're going to be painting in the stitches in the back of his pants. Deneb stone, or Rackarth flesh, as the new range is. Now we can see it a little bit better because, um, because the wash has picked out where the, where the stitches are, which is going to be a big help. For highlighting it's always really good to see where you're um, have the you know have the wash pick up where you're going to be painting these stitches. Okay, so you can't really tell too much, but there it is. Oh yeah, there's this terrible mold line on the back of this guy's right elbow, so I um I had to scrape it off, and I was yelling "fine cast" while I was doing it, and so now I'm just gonna repaint it with. Some Oberon flesh. Fix that baby right up. It's like it never happened. Okay, so what do we do now? We are going to... Um, we're going to do a little bit more work with the mouth. 
<coughs> and paint um, a little bit more um, bruising on this guy. So we're going to take some Devlin mud and we are going to fill in, in this step, we're going to fill in some nice shading onto his body. So look for places and areas like below his pectoral muscles and the corner of his arms where it would naturally be a little bit darker. And then just paint in a little bit of a, it's called black lining when you outline in black the areas that are um, to separate and differentiate between, you know, dark and light. And you could do it with your, with another application of Ogren Flesh, but doing Devlin Mud is going to give you a darker, more grittier appearance, which I always tend to like. If you <coughs> checked out my recent Vargeist tutorial, there are some models like Vampire Counts and like um, Ogres that I just feel lend themselves to a darker, grittier color scheme. Sometimes. Sometimes you want bright Ogres. But a lot of times, brown is good. If you want, you could also just go over the whole thing with Devlin mud. You're gonna end up with a less pallid looking... Wow, gross, look at these old pots. Look at how much paint I'm getting just by opening the thing because they were shaking and all the wash got up into the lid. Ah! 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 Games Workshop. I swear for the amount of promoting their models that I do. Oh man. They treat me like rubbish. They treat me like dirt. So I'm gonna see just how it looks with a little bit darker skin tone. I'm just gonna wash a little bit more just to just to see what it looks like with Devlin mud on this guy. That's not so bad. Especially like here where the hands um like really fail cast uh, between the fingers. Hey, so um, we're going to highlight up the little heads down at the bottom of our brag. And I'm going to be using Deneb Stone for this step, as well as Codex Gray. And let me show you what we're going to be working for. I did this one on the left here, which you can kind of see is a very pallid, pale gray. Um, build, so we built up to that. And we're going to start with Deneb Stone. And because you're going from a very healthy looking flesh tone, we're working our way from the highlights. What I find by working down here in his face is work down by the jawbone and uh, work your way up. as well as eyeballs. Ooh, very spooky. Okay, so now we're going to be using our Codex Gray. up a little bit and then just paint it on but for this you want to kind of stick to the highlighted areas like the, the ridge line of the brow the nose the highest area of the cheeks the bottommost part of the jawline the chin and then you end up with a very pale ghostly, deathly looking skin color. 
he's been dead for a while and their faces are almost all drained of color. Very good. Just like that. Next what we're going to do is we're going to paint some all red wash onto the uh, scars that our brag has. So you want to make sure that the wash is completely dry that you just did. Is a uh, Devlin mud wash or Ogren flesh, whichever one. And then the great thing about the all red is, or whatever the new wash is called, it just kind of sticks to the scars, and you know it's really really good about kind of just sticking to it. The raised areas, popping those out, just like that. We're gonna let those dry and <clears throat> work our way to this guy's mouth. You're gonna take some bleached bone and paint in his teeth. Or what you can see of his teeth. He's got this massive underbite. But he's also got a couple of chompers at the top as well. Okay. <clears throat> I think he's just about done. He looks great, looks gross. Um, we're gonna get some dark flesh now. And, um,. We're going to paint this color onto the blood of the of the two-handed sickle right at the top. So let me just show you how I do it and then I'll cut the video so that you guys can do it as well. Okay. Let's find like the darker areas and kind of paint that color into it. If you feel like you mess up then just take a little bit of bad at black or whatever the black wash is and and repaint it. Okay, so he's just about done, so I'm gonna let all this dry. We'll come back after he's fully based, and um, we'll finish this video off. <clears throat> okay, so um, I found this great, great technique that I just want to show you. I found it off of CoolMiniOrNot.com. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome! I was right about to wrap up this tutorial when I found this, and um, it's really, really cool. It's by this user named Lono. Um, if you just uh, Google Brag the Gutsman, you should be able to find this. He paints and gives a highlight of like hot turquoise, so it's not like verdigris, but it's like a, it's like this cool lighting effect on like the, it, it almost like tints the, the iron, the silver, and also uh, the hood. So I tried it out and I think it just looks amazing, so I'm going to show you how I did it. <clears throat> you just take some hot turquoise, you water it down a lot. In your uh, or you thin it down in your in your wet palette, and then you just paint uh, as if you're painting a highlight. And then what you should get is a very cool, um, cool tone. This blue, green, aqua, teal, as Sean Gately would say, tone that um, kind of sticks to the edges of your of your silver, and it's very very nice. Really, really, really nice, and um, yeah, I don't know how he thought of it, but it's really, it, it looks really good, especially contrasting off of the the rust. So I'm painting it on almost like verdigris, but I'm really sticking to the to the edges. And the great thing is that it unifies the different <coughs> surfaces, like the metal as well as the cloth from the hood. What you're gonna do is you're gonna paint it on the edge of your hood and all the hard edges 
like all the all the ripped raggedy ends and what it looks like is that uh, he uh, kind of highlights it a little bit more with some grays but I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it just where it is at this hot turquoise just because it's such a cool color and then um, I did it here on the front side you can see by the eyes um, here by the mouth all the way down then once it's dry I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bedab black wash to tone it down but I think it's just such a cool effect definitely try to check check it out it almost looks like a luchadori mask now <clears throat> but you also paint it really really slightly almost like um it almost has the effect of like an air uh, of, of using like an what's it called those air guns I can't I can't think what what I'm trying to say this air spray guns for when you're painting with eh. okay and I also did it on the sh on the boots in the front just to get this really ghostly tinge to your model and um, I think it's just really effective and looks really well without being quite verdigris. Um, one more fact we're gonna do before I leave you, I'm gonna tie this down with a black wash, is, uh, you know, for, for the mask, but we're gonna give him a little bit of five o'clock stubble. <coughs> and the colors we're gonna need for this are carried in granite, and Codex Grey. I'm trying a simpler version of this technique because before I've mixed uh, like skull, not skull white, but um, scorched brown with like chaos black and, um, and Codex Grey. That seemed to work, but I think uh, Carried and Granite is a good mix between chaos black and scorched brown, so we're gonna see if that works. Gonna thin it down, and we are going to brush this color right onto his chin. I think it needs a little bit more scorched brown. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Or maybe, maybe some chaos black. I'll let that dry also. Yeah, so if you want my other recipe for, for stubble, check out my how to paint stubble tutorial. Did it sometime last year. Uh, that one will really work no matter what, but I was looking for a kind of different way of doing it, and this seems to work okay. Paint this stubble onto his double chin too, down here. Job, if some of it will stick to his chin. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. Um, last thing, like I said, we're gonna wash his mask. And then this guy will be done. Just a little bit with this wash. There, just like that. So thanks for watching. 
Um, like I said, I love this model. I think it's great. I wish the fluff lived up to the way it looks because it's so cool. But you know, like I said, you can just throw him in your throw him into your man eaters unit. Count him as a, having a double handed weapon, and it should be all gravy, baby. So thanks again for watching, and we will see you in the next one.